Hey, it's Katherine from Brand Equip Designs, and if you're curious, I'm over at thebrandequip.com. Today, though, we are talking about colors and why I recommend actually having two color palettes for your brand colors. Um, now, this is not to say you have two different palettes of brand colors to choose from. It's still the same colors, but um, maybe different color codes or just rules in which colors to use in which um, mode. So the reason why I say this is because you should have one color palette for print and you should have one color palette for digital or screens. And the reason why is because when you print something off, it uses a color palette that is called CMYK, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And really what it does is it prints off little tiny dots um, in a certain area, and um, those dots will generate the color to your seeing eye. The same thing happens on the screen, but um, those colors on the screen are more light-based and tend to, um, when, when they show the dots, you can see brighter colors uh, better, whereas with CMYK, they tend to get muddy. Um, the way that this really happens is like if you combine three colors in CMYK, it tends to end up black um, if you're using the full force of the colors. And if you combine the colors in RGB, they end up white. So those uh, characteristics carry over in how colors are displayed. So brighter colors tend to get muddier, um, lighter colors are harder to get to be uh, very variations in. Um, without getting too muddy or too close to white or something like that. Whereas with RGB uh, or digital colors, um, you don't have to deal with those issues quite as much. So you have a broader range of colors you can play with. So that kind of covers the two different types of color modes that we're going to really be talking about. Now there is a workaround for printing off really awesome bright colors and that is to use spot colors which are pre-mixed ink cartridges that uh, kind of print like it's a swatch, like a, a paint swatch. So rather than uh, printing tiny dots, it paints it prints like all the same color. Um, so it's very uni unifying, it's very universal. Um, and you can actually get brighter colors with that um, or more specialty colors with it, but it's more expensive too. So you have to buy the cartridge. You have to make sure your printer uh, uses spot colors. Um, and there's just kind of like a whole, whole headache around it. So for the general online entrepreneur, uh, top generally not something you're really going to need to deal with. If that is something you want to uh, investigate a little bit, make sure you tell your designer about your openness to that and you guys can go from there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's go in a little bit more to why I say uh, you need two color palettes. And to do that, I'm actually going to take you a little bit behind the scenes and show you my own uh, color palettes for brand equipped designs. It's going to be fun. And it's also going to paint a very obvious picture as to why I take the standpoint of let's use um, two color palettes. It's really about creating rules for each situation, whether or not you need to create designs that are going to be printed or whether or not you're going to be creating designs that are going to be viewed on screens. Um, so yeah, let's just go into it and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you can see, this is my Brand Equip color palette and it's actually the RGB color palette, so it's four screens, and I ended up developing the brand colors for brand equipped designs in RGB mode. Now this is not something that you should always be doing, but it's something that I opted to do because I wanted to have access to those brighter colors, a broader sphere of brighter colors in general. I didn't really want to limit myself to the CMYK color palette because I knew that I wasn't really going to be printing out much for my brand and my clients weren't going to be needing to print out much of my branded material either. So I made an executive decision to just kind of play with the RGB color sphere and developed my color palette in that and didn't really worry too much about how it would translate over to CMYK. So it became very needed for me to also have a CMYK color palette. And I literally took that color, those colors, 
and put them in a CMYK color mode document. As you can see, they are very different, at least some of them are. I no longer have access to my awesome purple. Um, that is my primary purple that I use for branding. I'll show you real quick. Over here, this is that same primary purple. I did not change anything about it. I just transferred it over and this is how it would be printed if it were actually to be printed. So I decided to create rules for my CMYK color palette. I nixed all of those colors from um, my CMYK options. I tend to use this top color, purple color most, um, if I'm using a purple color, and then more of the blues in general. These are also my primary brand blues um, because they translated over quite well. Now, I no longer have access to any of these uh, teal action active colors. Um, I use these more for links and stuff on my website, so I'm not too worried about that. But I did get my pink, so I can still use those in backgrounds and stuff like that if I so choose or if I need to call something out, um, make, make it more noticeable or something, I can use a brighter pink. So again, this is the RGB for screens, and I developed it for screens versus the CMYK, which is for print. And it's really, like I said, about having rules for what colors to use in what type of design. Okay, so <laughs> now that you've seen the difference, and it is quite drastic, I'm sure that you noticed, because um, how can you not, right? Um, you can kind of see why I'm coming at you with the idea of let's do two color palettes. But there's a, here's the thing though. If you are actually in business and have a lot of materials that you're printing out, it's probably best that you end up developing a color palette that is CMYK based, which means that you would be developing your color palette for printing reasons rather than for screens. So if you're more of an online entrepreneur and your business is online and you're not really printing much out, you can have the um, you can have fun and play with the RGB color space, but if your end uh, needs for your business are actually going to be print in print, then you should definitely be developing a CMYK color palette for your brand colors and then translating that over to screen colors because that's a much smoother transition than screen colors to print colors. And you might be thinking that like, well, maybe I should just develop my color palette in CMYK anyway, and you totally can. That's all obviously an option, excuse me, obviously an option, um, but you don't have access to the fun colors that you can get on screen. So if you're drawn to brighter poppy kind of colors and you are an online entrepreneur, most of your branding stuff is going to be seen online or on a screen or digitally, then you can play and you can have access to all of those different colors uh, that are available for you in the RGB color gamut versus in the CMYK color gamut. So if you're doing that, uh, just make sure that you have rules for how your colors will be used uh, when developing print designs, just in case that ever comes up, you have it on hand to use. Okay, I'll leave you with that right now. Um, and let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'll see you later, bye.